Continue our breaking coverage of that earthquake in Maywood. It has been downgraded to a 3.6. Uh, earlier we were saying it was a yeah. 3.9. It happened at 7.01. Uh, we did feel it here, at least I did, standing over here. I could feel the ground rumble just a bit. It felt as if a large truck was going by, and I looked around to see if anybody else was feeling what I was feeling. Yeah. Um, we do know that people as far as Long Beach, Boyle Heights, East LA, and Commerce all felt it. Okay. Um, I know you were walking. You did yeah. not feel it, but... <clears throat> um, it was felt. You just never know. Depending you never if you're know. in mo motion, a lot of times you don't feel it. I know. I yeah. know. Absolutely. Well, we're all also seeing some aftershocks uh, this morning uh, on our map here. We had that initial shock again at mm -hmm. um, around 7.01, a 3.6 magnitude earthquake, and our map showing us just a few aftershocks this morning. Yeah, and it's interesting that, uh, you know, the earthquake happening now, we had the great shakeout this week. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we were talking to Dr. Lucy Jones. You know, we always talk about, you know, the kits that you need to have in place. You need, because we're here in Southern California and spend so much time in our cars, you should have a kit in your car and you should also have one in your home. Uh, joining us now is seismologist Dr. Lucy Jones. We want to thank you for joining us. And, and, and uh, Lucy, I have to say, we were just talking, you know, this past week about the great shakeout and being prepared for an earthquake. And here it is. Well, that's, well, let's put it this way. This earthquake so small is, is sort of a little extra advertisement for the shakeout. Remember that we are an earthquake country. Get ready for one that's going to be very different. I think one of the hardest things for us to understand when you feel one earthquake, how much different it is when we get a really big one. Yeah, now you've been saying, I know you tweeted that this one was actually 10 miles beneath Maywood. So anyone that felt it, it was at least 10 miles away. Right. Exactly. And, you know, usually, you know, our sort of average is about uh, like three to five miles down. So this is farther away than where most of our earthquakes are. One thing is when you're that far away, the motion gets damped down a little, but it also gets a little, you lose the high frequencies. So it might feel a little bit more rolling. Um, I know that for myself, I probably felt both the P and the S waves, but it was just a pretty low level rumble and more sound than very much motion. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, I know a lot of times people ask you when we feel something like this, is this the precursor um, or are we just going to get aftershocks after this? And, and I like to say, if I could tell you that, <laughs> I'd be richer than I am. But the uh, uh, about f every earthquake makes other earthquakes more likely, mm -hmm. but mostly they're smaller. And only about 5% of the time does one of the aftershocks become bigger than the first one, which will make us change the name and call the first one a foreshock. But we really, we've, I spent decades trying to find things that were different about foreshocks and did not find them. So we don't know it's a foreshock until something bigger happens. Yes. And, um, you know, so often, you know, people use this as that reminder to get their kids together. And you always talk about water, 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 water at home and, uh, you know, in your car, probably have just have a little, you know, you don't know how long it's going to take you to drive home. Uh, it's the single most important thing in terms of supplies. What I often think, though, is the most important thing is talk with your neighbors. You can use what happened today as an excuse to talk to the people that you know and help them um, uh, uh, do a little planning. Yeah. Well, how could you help each other after the earthquake? That's what you're really going to need is people that can help you. Yes. And, you know, we often talk about those fault lines uh, in this area of Maywood. What, what, what are we looking at there? Okay, so I, I will say that this small an earthquake, uh, you really don't know what fault it's on. You're moving on a very small surface. I actually, in my podcast, I just a few weeks ago had a thing all about faults, why we don't know whether small ones are on a particular fault or not. In the area, um, there are no surf faults mapped at the surface, but think about it. It's all the flats, the river sediments that are distributed out there, and mostly it's buildings at this point. Um, at depth, we do know there are some buried faults. Uh, we don't know which one of these it might be on because they're just too far down. Mm -hmm. And so often people would say, and we know this is not accurate, it's an old wives' tale, it's, it's earthquake weather. We have had a few small earthquakes 
in a short time span. Does this signal anything to you? No, it signals that you know, Los Angeles is getting is having sort of its normal level of activity. You know, the, the 2000s were a particularly quiet time, so I think people got used to having fewer earthquakes. This level of having a three or a four felt in Los Angeles several times a year is actually the normal long term average. Mm -hmm. And there have been no reports of any injuries or damage at this point, but we don't usually see any major damage until it gets what over the four level over the five if you okay. have damage below magnitude five you do not have a good building and you should be more careful about what you're doing mm -hmm. and when we were talking earlier this week um, you were explaining to people that when something like this has happened and when it's the bigger one you're not going to necessarily be able to call your family or your friends but you were saying take to text explain a little bit about that Right. Think about how you've just spent the, you know, the last uh, few minutes or a half hour since the earthquake, you know, looking at Twitter, looking at the website, texting your family. That all depends upon electricity. And uh, when the earthquake happens, a big earthquake happens, we'll be likely to lose our electrical uh, uh, grid. And then your cell phone, the cell towers have backup power, but it's only for four hours and everybody else is going to be trying to get in through there too. And therefore getting a phone call is essentially impossible. There's just not enough bandwidth. But sending a text takes much less uh, uh, data than getting a phone call through. So you can probably be able to get your texts through when you can't get a phone call through. So use that and do it in the first four hours because you're going to maybe be losing power and losing your cell towers after the, ba the batteries go dead. And we've talked before about all the things that we should have in our kits. You were talking about water, 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 because we may have some broken water mains. But you also talk about cash. And what are some of the other things that people, this might be a great time for people to get those kits together today. It's a gray day. You're inside. Get those kits together. What else would you tell people to put in those kits? Well, I think it's good to have supplies. I don't keep it in a separate kit because I'm not going to be leaving my house. They're not predicted. I'm probably going to be staying here. There's a few things like a first aid kit and some water and maybe a blanket that you want to have in your car. Oh, and walking shoes in case you're caught out greater distance. But within my house, I try to make sure I always have some spare cash because your, your credit cards don't work if there's no electricity. You want to have um, perhaps, you know, Make sure you never get completely all the way down on any prescription medication because they, the, the pharmacies might be closed for a while. Um, and you know, have food that doesn't uh, um, go bad quickly, that doesn't need refrigeration because the supply chains could be disrupted. And actually I do have one recommendation for that. I do keep a supply of food, things like tuna fish that I know I want to eat, but that'll last for quite a while. And uh, once a year, I donate it to a food bank and then get a new supply so that I always have fresh foods and I finally get my donations going that I really wanted to do anyway. A great suggestion. Thank you so much, Dr. Lucy Jones, for joining us this morning uh, to talk about this 3.6 earthquake that hit uh, beneath Maywood this morning at just after 7 o'clock.